The amygdala is responsible for the detection and response to threats. But when our emotional response is disproportionate to the stimulus, this process is called an amygdala hijack. Fear triggers the amygdala to send a distress signal to the hypothalamus. In fear or anger, there's a cascade of hormones released from the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland to the adrenal glands to release adrenaline and cortisol, the stress hormone. Cortisol functions to metabolize fat, protein, and carbohydrates to quickly convert energy for survival. Just think when you're stressed, what's going on in your body? Your blood pressure goes up, heart rate increases, and glucose is dumped into your system. In fear, we get ready to fight or take flight. Just like a hammer might only see nails, if we allow ourselves to stop thinking with our prefrontal cortex and see the world as threat, then we may opt to fight against it. If we're unable to regulate our amygdala because our experience of the world has been fearful or threatening, then we're likely to also see God as frightening and authoritative. Tragically, in the same way, children who are traumatized by abuse, fear, and anger will often grow up to project that fear and anger onto God. But villainizing fear and anxiety is not the best course. Our amygdala gives us the ability to survive. Unless we can label and recognize threats in the world, we would have no way to survive. Knowing and labeling our fears can also have tremendous value in our healing. We need to understand and appreciate our most beloved treasures, as well as the weight of what it is, if we were to lose them. To hold our memories of fearful situations in mind while taking risks to walk in the way of love gives us even more appreciation for how very precious love is. For perfect love casts out fear.